Hey everyone, it's Holly. In today's video, we're gonna be doing science. So grab a pair of safety goggles and some gloves because you're gonna need them. Let's get started. First of all, I just wanna say thank you so much to those of you that have subscribed. I can't believe we've only been doing this for a few weeks and we've just crossed over the 500 subscriber mark and that is so exciting because I didn't know if anyone was gonna care about my little tiny Polly Pocket channel and I'm so thrilled that so many of you are subscribed and following along. So thank you so much for subscribing. Um, today is a lesson in integrity and um, character. Uh, I am a strong believer in admitting when you're wrong or being open-minded to learning new things. And my first video that I posted was about a sun damaged compact. Specifically, it was one of the stamper sets and I used a wet sanding technique to remove the sun damage. Now, I received a lot of comments on that video. It is, to date, my most popular video. And a few of the comments were around using a technique called retrobriting. If you're not familiar with retrobriting, it's basically where you apply a hydrogen peroxide solution to plastic and it removes some yellowing from the plastic. It's something that is a very commonly used technique for whitening gaming consoles. So if you think of like a Super Nintendo or an NES, over time, a lot of those consoles will start to yellow from UV damage. And it's just a reality of electronics that are 30, 40 years old. When it came down to seeing those techniques used on the internet, I had only ever seen them used on white or gray plastic. And from doing a bunch of Google searches, it seemed that they only worked on white or gray plastic. So I replied to some of the comments saying, you know, thank you so much for that tip, but as far as I know that that only works on white or gray plastic. Today I'm eating my words a little bit because I decided to try it and today's video is all about how I got my 1992 Poly Nursery set pink. In a moment you're going to see what color it was before it was pink because it sure wasn't pink when I got it. And um, I am now a strong believer in retro writing. Now, I'll talk a little bit more at the end about my feelings on the two different methods, but this is just a different method of restoring sun damage, and there are definitely pros and cons to both. But let's jump into it. I'll tell you what retrobriting is, how I did it, what I used, and a few safety warnings. Before we get started, let's start with the safety warning. Please, if you are not an adult, do not try this at home. This is truly a chemistry experiment. We're using hydrogen peroxide and not only that high concentration hydrogen peroxide, which can be very damaging to skin and eyes. So we're always using gloves and we're always using safety goggles if we do this, and it should always be supervised by an adult. So let's get into it. So as you can see, this is what I was starting out with. This is the 92 Poly in the Nursery Compact. The top of the case was so orange and the bottom was quite pink. Just look at that color. It's honestly, it was bright orange and the bottom was so nice and soft pink. So that's what we're looking to correct using this new technique. Now I'm using a technique called retrobriting, which requires a special formulated gel that looks like this. And here's how I found it. This is a website called the Retrobrite Project. You can see the URL at the top of the screen, but this is a specially formulated gel. I had to go get special ingredients and this is a chemistry project, so there are some risks involved in doing this, but I used this Merlin's original recipe to Retrobrite my compact. Effectively, it was used mostly for whitening consoles and older computers that had yellowed over time, but some people in the comments said, hey, you should try this. And I figured, what have I got to lose? Why not? Let's do it. So the first ingredient I purchased is this uh, clear 40 volume developer. It's basically hydrogen peroxide used specifically. It's high concentration for bleaching hair. 
So um, you can see it's got a lot of warnings on it because it's very concentrated, but the main active ingredient is hydrogen peroxide. So that was ingredient number one. I also had to purchase OxyClean and that's just, again, you can get this in pretty much every country. Glycerin, which I found in the pharmacy and xanthan gum, which I found in the gluten-free aisle of the grocery store. An interesting thing to note is that Retrobrite gel can be kept shelf stable as long as you don't add the OxyClean in um, because that will start the chemical reaction. So it has to be in a sealed container that is a solid color so that light can't get in and start a chemical reaction. But I've done that because I only needed a little bit. Now, based on the formula I used, um, again, safety warning, <laughs> you need to wear gloves. So I've got my safety goggles and I've got gloves on both hands to make sure that I am doing this safely. But it's effectively created a gel that I am now going to paint onto the compact. So again, I just mixed a little bit of OxyClean into this to activate the gel. And you wanna be careful when you do this. I was very, very careful to be precise about this, to not get it on the logo. I wasn't sure if that would cause any problems. The logo wasn't in great shape to be honest, but I just didn't wanna make it any worse. And I didn't want any to run inside the compact. It's quite a viscous gel, so I wasn't really running the risk of it running inside, but again, if you're just doing it without care, that can happen. So as you can see, I did take my time. I also made sure that for the detail, it's quite orange inside the logo area. So I used a few smaller brushes to just get a little bit of gel inside there without getting it on the logo itself. So this just took a little bit of care and time to make sure that I was being accurate and careful. So when all was said and done, here's what it looks like all painted up. And now it is ready to go into sunshine. So you want to put it in the sunshine um, because it needs UV to activate the hydrogen peroxide and start the process of the chemical reaction that is ultimately going to get the color close to its original color. Now, as you can see, the gel dried up quite quickly so this was kind of problematic so i had to do a little bit of trial and error i ended up putting a glass bowl over top to try to keep some humidity in and that kind of worked but eventually it started to get cloudy outside so the two things i did was i wrapped it in saran wrap i repainted it with more gel put it in saran wrap and i ended up using a uv light that is meant for doing your nails but it actually worked really well for this. So after I would say probably close to six hours of UV exposure um, between the sun and the lamp, it was looking about right. So I am going to unwrap the compact and now I am going to carefully, very carefully peel this off, making sure that I don't get the gel on anything because again that gel can be really damaging to skin and eyes and I don't want it to touch anything that it shouldn't be touching and here's what the compact looks like so by wrapping it with the saran wrap it kept the gel quite moist which is ideal and I'm now just carefully going in with a damp paper towel and wiping off the excess gel so if you recall what it looked like we'll do a before and after shot in a little bit, but if you recall, it was very, very orange before, and now it is very much pink. It's not a perfect color match, as you can see, but it's pretty darn close. So I'm just being very, very careful with this wiping, making sure, again, I'm not getting any water inside the compact. There are a lot of stickers in this compact against the wall, and I don't want to damage any of them. 
Now I'm going in with finer tools, so a Q-tip and my favorite micro applicators that I use for cleaning and just getting the gel that was in the logo area out. Some of it did dry up a bit, so I'm just kind of lightly dampening it and then picking it out with those tools. So it's starting to look really good and cleaned up, but you know me, I can see that there's still a few surface scratches on this and I wanna get it looking as good as I can. So I am going to go in and clean this up a bit more. So I'm using my Novus Fine Scratch Remover. You've probably seen me use this in a few other videos, but this just helps to take out those surface scratches on the compact. So I am just buffing this out with a little piece of paper towel. Step two is I'm then going in with the plastic clean and shine also from Novus and this will just clear off any of that excess residue and get it looking good as new. So here's what it looks like. Um, it's pretty pink. If you look at from the side, you'll see it's a pretty close color match. It's not perfect. I will admit it is not perfect. I don't know if it can be perfect after 30 years, but if you look at how damaged it was before and what it looks like now, that's a pretty good result. So my vote for this method is it can work. Don't expect perfection. I don't know if that's possible when you have that extent of damage, but it's a fantastic method. And you know, whichever method you choose, you now know the pros and cons of each, and you can weigh that for yourself and determine what you think would work for you. There's a little bit of risk involved with this, given that retrobrading does involve some heavy duty chemicals, but so happy to have this set back in better condition. So what do you think? That's pretty amazing. Now it's not perfect but I don't know that it can be perfect after 30 years and it was quite damaged so I will say um, of the two I do like the way that this one came out there are some pros and cons to using the wet sanding technique and to using the retro braiding technique the thing I really liked about the retro braiding technique is that if there are contours to the set so for example this one's still quite flat but I'm thinking about my fun time clock. If you saw my video about my fun time clock, you'll know that my fun time clock is quite sun damaged. So I'm looking forward to trying this on my fun time clock. Um, however, it the, the finish isn't super consistent. Um, there is a little bit of cloudiness to it. It's still very shiny. It still kept that original shine, but there is a little bit of cloudiness to the color, if that makes sense. It's really hard to pick that up on camera. Um, I know it looks almost perfect on camera, but take it from me, there is a little bit of cloudiness to it. The benefit of the wet sanding technique is you are literally removing a layer of the plastic so you are getting down to that original color whereas here I've really just changed the surface color. Um, I don't know that one is better than the other. I would say that retro braiding is great if you don't have a way to restore the finish with an enamel coat. It's also great if you're working on something that has a lot of curves or grooves or little detail to it because you can paint the gel in. But on the other hand, um, again, you could get a little bit of a cloudy finish. Now, worst case scenario, you retrobrate something and I don't know, try the wet sanding after if you didn't get the finish you liked. But I am very, very happy with how this turned out. So my apologies <laughs> to the people that I said that it's not gonna work, because it did work. And I'm glad I tried it. And um, if you're curious about trying this, again, just please be careful with the retro braiding material because it is a corrosive chemical. You have to be very careful with your skin, with your eyes when you're using it. 
but I am so glad that I tried it. So I hope you enjoyed checking that out. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you haven't yet, please hit the subscribe button, like the video, leave a comment. If you have suggestions for future videos, please leave them in the comments. I am here for your suggestions. And if you are on Instagram, please come follow along at Pocket Vintage Toys where I share lots of behind the scenes on our video production, uh, the Polly collection and all the stuff as I receive it. So come check that out too. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.